Okay, happy Wednesday, everyone. Uh, welcome to a nutty, a nutty, yes, a nutty one for sure, but another uh, uh, study hall here with Napa Valley Wine Academy. Got my tongue twisted there a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, today, we're going to have uh, our resident expert, uh, Catherine Bouguet, who's our director of education, uh, take us through a WSET level three tasting note for a simple wine. So let me go ahead and bring Catherine here on screen. Welcome, Catherine. Great. Thanks so much, Chris. Hi, everybody. So go ahead and we take can it get away. started. Yeah, take it All away. All right, great. Great. Welcome to class. So today we're going to take a wind through the level three WSET and talk about how you know when you should call a wine simple and what that means and what you should put in your note. I'm not going to tell you what the wine is just yet because I want you to just think about what we're talking about you know, here today. And then, of course, we can talk about the wine at the end. But let's go ahead. I have a red wine you know, in front of me, so I'm going to take a red wine uh, through and talk about simple. So the very first thing we do is check to see if the wine is, is clear or hazy. It's clear. When we talk about the intensity, we're on the appearance, when we talk about the intensity of the color, with a red wine, you can do a little sort of cheat where you can put the glass down on a white surface and look down into it. Can you clearly see where the stem meets the bowl? If you can clearly see that circle where the stem meets the, the bowl, um, if you can see it, then you're not deep. And I can see my circle, so I do not have a deep wine. But now I'm still left with, do I call it medium or pale? So what you do is you take either your exam paper or your SAT, and you're going to put the glass down on the paper. Can you read clearly all of the words on the page through the core of the wine? Not the rim, but through the core, the center of the wine. I cannot. So it's called a medium intensity wine. If I could read all of the words, I would have called it pale. There's another way to do that that my colleague Peter Marx does, and I love this technique as well. But you can angle the, the glass down 45 degrees, and you put your hand, you're going to put your hand um, palm down and look at your fingers. If you can't see your fingers through the wine, then you're going to call that wine deep. If you can see your fingers but not clearly make out your nails and whether you need a manicure, uh, then that's going to be medium. But if you look through the wine and you can see, oh my goodness, I, I have to get my nails done, then you're going to go ahead and call that wine pale. I love that. It's not mine, um, Peter Marks. But so you can do it several ways, but you're looking at how, you know, the intensity of that color. So for me, when I looked down through, I could see where the stem meets the bowl but I couldn't clearly read all the words on my page when I put the wine down against it. So I have a medium intensity wine. So let's go off to the color. When we talk about the color of a red wine, we start off with purple in the range. You're looking for whether there's a blue tint or it's obviously purple looking. My wine is not. My wine is ruby. Not that you can probably see that through here. But when would you go off from ruby to one of the other choices? After that is garnet. Only call the wine garnet if there's some orange or brown to the wine. And then if there's more orange or brown, but still some ruby, you can even go off to tawny. But for my wine, there's no orange or brown, and it's not purple, so I'm ruby. I'm a ruby color. Okay, let's go off to the nose. Let's go off to the nose of the wine. Does anybody um, out there who's taking um, WSET level three remember how many marks there are for the nose section on your SAT exam? There's seven, seven marks. So you're gonna have one for the aroma intensity, five for aromas, and one for aroma development. So let's talk about those. So your very first one is intensity, the way the WSET teaches it is you put the glass under your nose. If you're able, without actively smelling, to describe the wine, you know, all these, if, you're, if you can describe it and explain it, you know, to someone, then that's pronounced. However, if you're not pronounced, you should go ahead and swirl, actively smell. Are you light? Is it hard to dis discern aromas? If you're not light, you're in the medium camp. 
And only if you're in the medium camp should you decide, do I stay at medium? Do I ding it down to medium minus? Because, all right, it's still hard. I can get out some aromas, but it's still difficult. Or once you actively sniff and smell, are you like, wow, okay, there's, there's more going on in here than I um, thought. Then you bump it up to medium plus. For my wine, I'm going to stay at medium. There's some nice discernible aromas, um, but not too much. So I'm going to stay at medium. Now I have to decide what aroma characteristics to use. And I've got five points available. You don't want to write just five aromas if you can help it. Always write a few more. That way, if something you choose doesn't work, there's still another option for you to gain maximum points. Now, we're talking about simple wines today, so that might not always be easy, because sometimes with simple wines, you're able to pull out a number of aromas, but then you get caught. You're like, ah, I can't think of what else to add here. There's not much else going on. If that happens to you, my best advice is to say you found red cherries. Go ahead and add other aroma descriptors that is in that cluster. And of course, by cluster, I mean the name that's on the SAT card in bold print. You can see it there. Oh, no, we don't have up the, um, um, the aromas, the other side of the card. So the cluster is like red fruits. And then under red fruits, the specific descriptors are red cherry, raspberry, strawberry. When I go ahead and smell my wine, I have red cherry. I do have strawberry, raspberry. I even get a little black cherry. Maybe I can eke out some violet, but I mean, I pretty much stop there. That's when your mind should be saying, wait a minute, do I have a simple wine? I'm only able to pull out a few things and most of them fall into one cluster. So I've got mostly red fruits. That is absolutely when you should invoke simple or put simple, you know, on your um, tasting exam. So you would actually write the word simple or neutral um, and that will be one of your five marks. So then you only need four others, although you're going to write, try to write a few more. So if you, for this wine, I could write red cherry, raspberry, strawberry, black cherry, simple, and then maybe violet. And I've already have six. Um, so I've got enough points, but you have to write simple. And remember, there's no negative points. So if you're thinking this could be a simple wine, it's not going to hurt you to write it down. It would be strange if you did that on a very complex, like Grand Reserve or Rioja. But um, if you're even asking yourself if this is simple, go ahead and write it down. There's no negative points. Okay, so let's go off to aroma development. So that's whether we, we sense any maturity in the wine. When I go ahead and smell my wine, I got, as you noted from my descriptors, all this primary fruit. I didn't get any secondary, didn't get any tertiary, and what we're really looking for here is tertiary. Am I getting anything that shows the wine has age on it? Only, only if your wine has some tertiary are you going to move away from youthful to developing. So my wine here, because I have no tertiary, is going to be called youthful. Now, if I had enough descriptors and I had enough tertiary descriptors where almost everything was tertiary and then maybe just one, you know, they're nothing really discernible, you know, that was primary and or secondary, then I would want to call the wine fully developed. But my wine is all about the primary fresh fruit. There's no tertiary. So I'm going to go ahead and call it youthful. And one more point on that. Maybe I'm a stickler for making sure you get it. Um, but if you have a wine that has all primary and secondary, that is still not developing because secondary could just be still a young, fresh wine, but it just has some secondary components like oak on it. So you definitely want to only move it off or away from youthful if it has some tertiary. Okay, done. All right, so let's go off to the palate. So when we talk about the sweetness of the wine, that's our first thing on our palate. When we talk about that, we, you know, generally a lot of red wines are going to be dry. This one is. You only want to move it off to off dry if you just sense a hint of residual sugar. Like if you're even asking yourself, wait, is this off dry? Then it might be because you're sensing some residual sugar. You're going to use medium dry and or medium sweet if sweetness is a characteristic of the wine that you'd want to express. However, 
there's not enough sweetness that that would be considered a either dessert wine or something that you would pair with dessert. Sweet is that category when it's either a dessert wine or something you would enjoy paired with dessert. It's sweet enough to be called sweet. Luscious, save that only only for things like um, PX Sherry or Rutherglen Muscat. They're almost sticky on your lips. And because you won't have a fortified wine on the exam, there's really not much of a chance that you're going to have a luscious red wine <clears throat> on the exam. Generally, you're going to have a dry uh, wine for a red wine on the exam. Okay, let's go off to acidity. If you've watched some of the other uh, videos, um, I go ahead and do a count off uh, system just to give something tangible for you to go on. What we're, what we're trying to calibrate to is how long you're salivating. And so for me, it's just a count off. So when I go ahead and do this wine, You do need to go ahead and swish it around like mouthwash. You need to get that wine all around your mouth. This isn't the time to be dainty. Let me go ahead and do it again and I'll do my count up. Okay, I've got bright acid. Still salivating. Still salivating. Ah, and then it fades. So I got to medium. Three for me, and it's Mississippi's in between. <laughs> Three for me is medium. If I went past medium, I'd call it medium plus. And if I kept going to four and beyond, then that would be considered a high acid wine for me. So mine went to medium acidity. Tannin in a red wine, you're sensing the dry, drying sensation in your mouth. For me in this wine, I feel a drying sensation across my gum line, which is often where you'll sense that drying um, sensation. So I have some drying, but not much. I also don't have it all across my palate. So if you only have it along your gum line, you want to ding down your, your tannin some. It's when you have it all along your gum line and all across your palate that you want to be raising up your tannin. So for me, mine's at a medium minus level. I went to the medium camp, but it's not drying enough for me to stay at medium, so I dinged it down to medium minus. Uh, okay, let's move on. Alcohol. Pretty much the only thing you can do is guess if you're not feeling any heat, you know, or even your pain receptors, if, you know, if the, if the alcohol is too high, might be invoked. But if, you're, if you don't feel warmth, there's a good chance that you're at medium. It would be hard to get to low. There's not um, um, many wines that would fall into that category because it's under 11%. So medium would be the safe answer here. So let's go off to body. It's just the weight of the wine on your palate. And for me, this sits, and that's against all red wines of the world. So you need to think about, you know, on the end of the scale in full, you know, would be like really, you know, ripe Napa Cab or Barossa Shiraz. Or, um, but for my wine, I, I get enough. I'm not full bodied. I'm not light. So I'm, I'm in the medium camp. And I do have to ding it down to medium minus. It's just not sitting heavy on my palate. Okay, so mousse we reserve only for sparkling wines. So we'll move on. Flavor intensity. When I go ahead here, I want to see, hey, is it at the ends of the scale? Is it either pronounced? Mine's not. But it's not light as well. Same thing as in the aromas. I get some nice flavor. So I'm going to leave it at medium. I'm in the medium camp. I don't want to ding it down, and I don't want to bump it up. So I'm going to leave it at medium. For my descriptors, and here's something you need to know about simple wines. If you put simple in your aromas, you must repeat it in the flavor descriptors for full maximum points in the flavors. So does anybody out there recall how many points you get for flavor descriptors? It's three. All right, try to write more than three, um, but there are three marks available. That means one of your three descriptors has to be simple. And then you could say red, raspberry, and violet, you know, whatever else you want. But of course, you're going to also add black cherry, red cherry, because you don't want to just put the three things. Okay, so the main point here is you have to have, when you have a simple wine, you have to say simple is one of your five aroma marks. 
and you have to repeat that simple as one of your three flavor marks. So please keep that in mind. Okay, we're left with the finish. If I go ahead and do that same thing where I swish the wine around in my mouth like mouthwash and do a count off. So like how long do the pleasant flavors go? When I do that, I get to medium. So you don't want to count anything if you're just like, say the, you know, if I were to go ahead and swish this around and spit, then I say, okay, ooh, red cherry raspberry, I say, red cherry raspberry, red cherry raspberry. And then though, it's just like, hmm, there's a touch of bitterness and the, the fruit is gone. That's when you shut it off. You don't count either just, you know, acid or tannin, you know, when the fruit um, or the sweetness has gone away. So this would be considered a medium finish. So let's go ahead and do the quality conclusion for this wine. We use the Blick system, right? So balance, length, intensity, and com complexity. Those are things that make up a premium wine. For our wine, we have to see if we have all four. If we have all four, the wine's going to be considered outstanding. If we have three of those things, very good. Two of those things, good. And if we only have one of those things, it's an acceptable wine because um, we generally won't get a poor, um, you know, we won't get a poor or faulty wine on the exam. So for my wine, do I have balance? You have to ask yourself, do I have enough fruit to support the other structural elements of the wine, the tannin, the acid? Do I, is everything in balance? Check for this wine. There's lovely fruit. You know, it's not incredibly intense but lovely fruit and it's balanced by the acid, the alcohol, you know, um, so we call that wine balance. So check. Okay. Do we have length? Did I have a long length? And only if I have long, do I give it the check? I did not. Mine was medium. So I don't give that the check. Okay. What about intensity? Did I have either aroma or, or palate or um, flavor uh, intensity that was at the ends of the scale, medium plus or pronounced? No. So that doesn't get the check. Do I have C, complexity in the wine? Is there a lot going on, either the three different types, primary, secondary, tertiary, or lots of clusters? For me, no, I even invoked the simple. You know, so my wine, I wouldn't give the complexity check. So I have an acceptable wine. Now, when it comes to talking about its potential for aging, you think, okay, First of all, does it have something structurally that will allow it to age? This doesn't have a lot of acid or a lot of tannin. And generally, once, that, once these red fruit flavors fade, it's got nothing. So this is a wine that you would recommend drink now, not suitable for aging. So that's how you determine that. So now let me go ahead and reveal what the wine is. It is a 218 Beaujolais, Louis Jadot Beaujolais. Now, interestingly enough, some of you uh, might be saying, but wait a minute, you didn't really say, you know, banana and candied cherry and things that you'd expect from carbonic maceration. This wine was made by semi-carbonic maceration. So I thought I'd take the last two or three minutes of this study hall and just go over, you know, what that means. When we're talking about full-on carbonic maceration, you're taking the full clusters, the berries, and you're putting them into a fermentation vessel. But you're flushing that vessel with CO2 so that there's no oxygen and shutting the vessel. When that happens, there's not the oxygen for traditional fermentation to take place. So an intracellular fermentation starts to take place. Once the alcohol in those grapes and that intracellular fermentation are going on, get to about 2%, the skin split. And that's a winemaker, a time when the winemakers will separate the skins from that fermenting juice and finish fermenting it off of the skins, which is why Beaujolais doesn't often have a lot of tannin in it, right? You're not, you know, um, macerating um, that juice on the skins. Now, that's full-on carbonic. With semi-carbonic maceration, what's happening is you're taking that same bunch of grapes and you're putting them into a fermentation vessel, but this time you're not going to flush the tank with CO2. So you've got oxygen. The berries at the bottom of that vessel are going to start to crush from the weight. And they're going to start, the ambient yeast 
organic with the oxygen is going to start a traditional fermentation. Well, what do you recall as a byproduct of alcoholic fermentation? CO2. The CO2 is going to cover the grapes, the whole grapes above it in CO2. So those grapes are going to start an intracellular fermentation. So you actually have a mix of traditional fermentation going on and carbonic maceration. And that's what's happening with this wine. I think that's it. I've took this note through the WSET level three. I don't know if there's any burning questions, uh, Christian. Yeah, don't see any questions uh, so far, but wow, what a masterclass on uh, sim taking a simple wine through a WSET level three tasting note and a little primer on um, carbonic maceration. So thanks so much uh, for, for that. <laughs> uh, always, always great to have you uh, on our Facebook Live Study Hall. I wanted to thank everyone for joining us uh, today. Uh, as a reminder, we do these broadcasts live Monday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time. And we also do them on Saturday, 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. You can find a schedule of upcoming uh, Facebook Live broadcasts on our website as well. And tomorrow we'll be having a special webinar, not a Facebook Live broadcast, but a webinar on wine faults with um, Master Sommelier Tim Gazer. So check that out on our website as well. In the meantime, stay safe and drink well. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. Cheers.